What does FNAF Help Wanted hide from the player off camera in the Five Nights at Freddy's 2 area? If you thought spending five nights in a haunted pizzeria was a daunting task, I have some unfortunate news for you. In the FNAF 2 location, we're faced with more than twice as many mechanical foes. And to make matters even worse, our job as night guard will keep us here for six nights instead of five. Today, we'll be taking a look beyond the walls of this horrifying pizzeria at some things we aren't usually meant to see, like how this level's animatronics behave off camera, including what happens when the music box stops and the puppet enters our office. So I hope you enjoyed this look behind the scenes of Help Wanted. Now, before diving in, I'll quickly recap what happens in this area. So in the FNAF 2 location, we are once again stationed in the security office of a Freddy Fazbear's Pizzeria. As you may have guessed, there are no doors in this location, only a long hallway directly in front of us and two vents on either side of our desk. In order to survive the night, you must keep tabs on your cameras while simultaneously using your desk lights to spot the encroaching animatronics. If they manage to reach your office, you have to quickly put on your Freddy Fazbear mask in order to trick them into leaving. This does not work on the puppet, however, as the only way to prevent them from jump scaring you is to keep their music box wound. Nights 5 and 6 are black light levels, meaning their lighting is entirely different than the first four nights, and the AI are a lot more aggressive. On night 6 though, the lights are changed in color once more, and the rest of the withered animatronics will now be active, resulting in a much more challenging night. Recap aside, let's take a look at this map from a different perspective. So after turning the lights on, I wanted to move the camera through the map and take a look at each of the animatronics in their starting positions. In the very back of the restaurant, we could see three of the withered animatronics all sitting dormant in the corner of this back room. Withered Bonnie is sitting upright in the corner, looking as menacing as ever, while the other two have definitely seen better days. Freddy is in some kind of inverted Family Guy death pose, with his leg bent at a 90 degree angle and his fingers broken in all different directions. Withered Chica is definitely a bit worse for wear, and her severed leg is standing upright in front of her. Something I noticed while inspecting her model though, is what I believe to be blood covering the inside of her mouth. The jaws of her endoskeleton are coated in what I assume to be a splatter of blood, which is a pretty gruesome detail that would be easy to miss during regular gameplay. If we move beneath the map, we can see that her other arm is sticking straight down through the floor. And while observing this, I realized that this is where Foxy is stored before he is brought to the map. Our main man Foxy here will remain underneath this room until they are warped into the hallway. And after the player wards them off with the flashlight, they will be moved into the back with the other withered animatronics. As for the rest of these guys, they will only start moving on night six. So we'll come back to them a little bit later. Heading over to the toy animatronics, they're standing next to each other in their starting positions. They will always start the night in the same position where all three are visible on camera nine. However, because of the placement of the camera and the dark lighting, it'd be hard to see that all three characters are clipping through each other. Bonnie's left arm is sticking through Freddy's side, and Freddy's left arm is clipping all the way through Chica. From the front, this looks a bit messed up, but when viewed from the back, it almost looks like their arms are locked Wizard of Oz style. Among these animatronics is Bloom Boy, who starts off in the same room as the puppet. The moment he becomes active, he'll be moved just beneath the room he starts in, where he will remain until he's warped closer to the office. Now, Balloon Boy only attacks a player through the vent on our left, and the way this works is actually interesting. So we can't typically see inside the vents unless we turn their lights on. But as you'll be able to see with the lighting effects disabled, there is a black barrier placed at the entrance, which prevents us from seeing inside. Heading inside the vents, they take a 90 degree turn and then simply come to an end. Just beyond the office walls, we can see there are two more sections of vent placed on either side of the player, and these particular assets are floating disconnected from the rest of the map. These segments are used when the animatronic, such as Bloom Boy, begins approaching her office through the vents, and when this occurs, they'll be warped into the exact ventilation area, which we can see through our cameras. After a brief moment, they'll then jump across into the next section, where they can then enter our office. Unlike the other enemies we face in this location, Bloom Boy is incapable of jump scaring the player. And when we put on the Freddy mask, they will immediately run out of the vent and into the hallway. We can watch this from another perspective, where we'll see he teleports backwards a small distance before running out. He will then sprint past our desk and into the main hallway, where he is then sent back to his starting position. As for the other animatronics, we can watch as they walk through the building and warp between locations. For instance, the moment Toy Bonnie becomes active, they'll jump over here and walk past the bathrooms before being moved underneath the map temporarily. From here, they'll be sent all the way across the level to what I believe is one of the party rooms, which are stored separately from the rest of the map. As for the main hallway in front of us, each of these doors leads directly out of bounds. When an animatronic reaches one of said doorways, they'll be sent back to the party room area. Only in this case, they're now standing at the entrance to the ventilation system. 
multiple enemies can attack us this way at once. And it's pretty cool being able to see not one, not two, but three animatronics inside the vents at the same time. So when the animatronics reach our office, they'll stand in front of our desk, which forces us to put on our mask or we will eventually be jump scared. What's interesting is that while Chica was standing in our office, I found Freddy had been moved beneath the map right below our desk. I'm not sure why he was placed here. I'm assuming it's because Chica was already in the office when Freddy was meant to attack, but if you know why this occurred, let me know in the comments. Something else I noticed that's kind of funny is that when we ward off Mangle using the Freddy mask, we can see that they are quickly moved out of our office. This movement is so fast that even in bullet time, we can barely see it happening. It's a bit odd too because, to my knowledge, the other animatronics vanish right away when leaving the office. Mangle seems to be the only exception. Next, let's have a look at the puppet. Unlike the rest of this robotic cast, the puppet does not navigate the pizzeria as they approach the player. Instead, the music box must be wound in order to prevent an unavoidable death as they walk down the hallway to jump scare us. If we move the camera over to the prize counter, we can see the blue and purple box placed just beside the counter. And it just so happens Mangle had the same idea, as they're over here keeping the marionette company. Moving the camera inside the box itself, we'll see that the puppet is bent all the way over inside it, with their arms tucked underneath their legs. Their model is pretty tall, so I was a bit surprised they fit this box so neatly. When the music box runs out, the box will flip open with a burst of confetti, and the marionette will basically unfold their body as they stand upright. After a quick spooky hula dance, their model will reset into a folded position within the box. Now, I didn't realize this at first, but the moment the puppet is activated, the rest of the animatronics on this map will be completely unloaded. Moving the camera throughout the map is a bit eerie now, because this location is typically never this empty. Though, we're not completely on our own. Even though Tori Chica has been unloaded, her cupcake still exists on this map, and it is floating just beneath the floor. I guess this just proves that Mr. Cupcake really is the strongest animatronic of them all. Shortly after the puppet's initial animation finishes, they'll be warped into the hallway in front of us and begin walking to our office. They really are quite massive, considering they can't even stand upright in this corridor without their head touching the ceiling. When they eventually reach our office, the player camera will be warped way, way into the sky, where the jump screen animation will play out. So back inside the map, I decided to teleport our player around and see what happens, because even though we're unable to walk around, we can still move the player themselves throughout the pizzeria. I took a stroll over to the toy animatronics, and we can get as close as we want, because there are of course no jump scare triggers tied to these models. Heading over to the prize counter, we can move the player on top of the puppet's box, which is kind of neat, and even stand in front of it when they pop out. If we move the player into the main hallway, you can see that when they warp here and begin heading to our office, they will walk straight through us like we're not even here. Next, let's take a look at the Freddy mask. So when one of our robotic foes enters our office, we use this mask in order to trick them into leaving. But how exactly does it work? Well, viewing this from another angle, we can see that the mask instantly warps in front of the player camera. It is also tied to our camera so that when we look around, the mask moves with us, which looks pretty funny from this perspective. When the mask is taken off, it will return to its starting position on the cardboard box beside us. Now at this point, I want to see what would happen if we move the player onto the pizzeria and then equip the Freddy mask. And I wasn't disappointed. With the player controller placed at the end of the hallway, I put the mask on and it still appears on our head instantaneously. When taking it off though, the mask will then float all the way back to its starting position. Something else I noticed is that when the mask is in transit, if the player looks around, the mask will move with it. I then warp the player into the party rooms and equip the mask, where I realized that the mask's acceleration changes depending on how far it has traveled. So by continuously pressing the spacebar, we can make it move ridiculously fast. So heading into night five, I was curious what the rest of this pizzeria looked like in this altered lighting. And while flying around, you'll see that the black light effects will fade in and out depending on how far away you are from the map. Something else I noticed is that the Freddy mask also looks a lot different on this particular night. With the post-processing effects enabled, the mask itself is a bit glossy in appearance. And because of the lighting in our office, it has a purple tint to it. You would usually never be able to tell, but with these effects disabled, we'll find that the mask is actually a metallic silver color instead. Just behind our desk, there are some shelves and open lockers, and among the other merchandise is a Mr. Cupcake plush. For some reason though, they're a bit camera shy, and no matter what angle we look at them from, they will always be looking the other way. Of course, Mr. Cupcake wouldn't be complete without Chica, and flying through the restaurant, we'll find that something isn't right with her either. And by that, I mean she's sunken into the floor up to her shins. I know the animatronics get quirky at night, but this is just ridiculous. On night six, the lighting once again changes, and our office now has a reddish purple tint to it. 
The rest of the cast are now active as well, and will begin their assault on the poor Night Guard. Similar to the toy animatronics, Withered Bonnie will walk down the center of the main hallway before coming to a stop. This model, in particular, looks downright terrifying in this lighting, and it's highly unsettling as they stare us down from the shadows. We can also watch as Withered Freddy stomps into our office, where he will assume a similar position to Toy Freddy. I realized at this moment that he was not alone, because Chica and Foxy decide to join him. They almost look like they're standing in line at the supermarket, which makes this whole thing a little less scary. Nope, it's still horrifying. And speaking of scary, there are circumstances where both the toy and withered version of Freddy will be loaded into the same location. Because of this, they'll clip through each other's models, which results in a nightmarish fusion of Freddy's. Now, for the most part, the toy animatronic jump scares are simply them lunging towards the camera, but the withered animatronics are a bit more interesting. Bonnie, for example, will remain far below the camera for a moment before being quickly moved up into frame where his animation plays out. Even more terrifying, Chica will behave the same way, except her arms will stick straight out and her eyes are rolled back into her head. Like Bonnie, she will then be moved upwards into frame where she begins biting at the camera, resulting in one frightening jump scare. Finally, after completing the Withered Knight, I want to take a look at what happens when we open the prize box on the table. As you can see, the box is currently empty inside, but after spinning the handle a few times, it will burst open with some confetti. Only, for some reason, our prize launched upwards through the ceiling, and it never came back down. Uh, glorious? But with that, that's everything I found hidden off camera in the FNAF 2 section of Help Wanted. There's a lot for us to cover still, so subscribe today so you won't miss the rest of my dive into Help Wanted, as well as other FNAF related content in the future. Thanks for watching, and cheers!